Next on AMC, Alfred Hitchcock's thrilling spy drama based on the true life exploits of Russian agents who infiltrated the French government. It was 1968, the year of a presidential election, and of course the media was consumed with the tales of the various campaigns. In May, Alfred Hitchcock called a press conference at his residence in New York's St. Regis Hotel, and he began with the statement, I am here to announce that I am going to run. He paused as a ripple of anticipation went through the crowd of reporters, all of whom were wondering what office he would run for. He continued, I am going to run a picture in about a year. And then he went on to announce his plans for bringing Leon Uris' bestseller Topaz to the screen. Now the project would take two years from inception to completion, and there were problems at every turn. Under the agreement Universal made with Leon Uris, the author would write the first draft of the screenplay. Well, while he worked on that, Alfred Hitchcock and his wife Alma took an extended European tour, a combination vacation and scouting trip. And as the filming schedule uh, drew near, Hitchcock reviewed Urus's script and he didn't like any of it. He called writer Samuel Taylor in from Maine and he begged him to come to Europe to do some rewrites. Well, what Taylor found out that it wasn't simple rewrites that Hitchcock wanted. It was practically an entire new script. Taylor followed the film company throughout Europe, writing or rewriting scenes uh, every day and sometimes even hours before the scene was actually shot. The problems and delays contributed to making this film one of Hitchcock's most expensive productions. Here's Topaz. Later that year, when Franklin saw the released version of Topaz, he noticed that the final scene that he saw was missing. And he led a search for the footage, but he gave up when he learned that the outtakes were destroyed. Nearly 17 years later, Franklin, now a film director in his own right, uh, director of such films as Psycho II, received a call from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. The Academy wanted him to catalog a private collection of films, and he agreed on condition that Topaz be researched and cataloged first. Well, amazingly, the first can of film that he opened was Topaz, complete with the footage from not one, but two alternate endings, endings that Alfred Hitchcock had privately stashed away. And now, here in American Movie Classics, we're going to see the way Topaz might have been played. The ending that Richard Franklin actually saw was this one, where the two French spies, Piccoli, the Russian sympathizer, and Stafford duel it out in a stadium. Well, the airport ending also received mixed reviews, so Alfred Hitchcock decided to piece together a third ending. And that's the one that we saw in today's completed film, where the Russian sympathizer commits suicide. Since this was the ending that was approved by the studio, it appeared on all of the release prints of Topaz. Now, thanks to people like Richard Franklin and Mike Fitzgerald over at Universal, American Movie Classics is able to bring you backstage, as it were to see how these classic films might have looked from a different perspective.